Coach Travis Mass here, and what we're about to do is um, we're going to get these dudes primed, to try to get their neural system primed, get ready to do some good speed warm ups and then some speed work. And we're going to start with what we call get ups, and uh, what they're going to do is they're going to get up as fast as they can, facing me in an athletic position. Ready? Go! Back down, back down, we'll do two more. Go! Back down. Go. All right, on your belly. We'll do three more. Go. One, two more. Here we go. Go. Back down. Go. Good, good, good. Best. As you can see, what we tried to do is I moved around a little bit, you know, to uh, get these guys, their minds ready to like, not only get up, but also be aware of where I'm gonna be. It just gets their whole body, their whole CNS ready to do a lot of good, you know, conditioning work that we're about to perform. So now we're gonna do what's called runner holds. And what, what you'll see is that there's gonna be some hip stability. There's gonna be some uh, balance, some proprioception. And it's a great way to get these guys, you know, stable for when they're running. Also, you'll see they were able to work on mechanics as well. So, all right, boys, start with your right leg up. It's facing the camera. Ready? Go. Hold it. So, make sure dorsiflexion and combine the knee. Hand at the hip. Good. All right, back. Extend. Try not to lean over when you do that, right? Yeah. Maintain that good angle. Forwards. So keep your foot pointed straight too. Back. And when you back, keep your foot straight. Yeah. Forwards. Back. Forwards. All right, switch legs. All right, back. Forwards, make sure good doors. Yes, good dorsiflexion. Back. Forwards. Back. Extend easy. Forwards. Good. So what they would do is they would do anywhere from one to two sets of eight to ten reps on each leg. So but for purposes of the video, we're only going to do three just so you guys can see how it's performed. Now we're going to do um, a simple abduction, adduction, balancing on one leg. So they're going to get some great hip strengthening, also going to get some mobility work, also going to get stabilization on the foot that's on the ground, as you'll see. All right, boys, start with your... You're gonna be balancing on your right leg, left leg goes up in the air. Ready? Out. In. Stay off the ground. Out. Yeah. My weak leg. In. See, as you can see, for Rabbit here, this would be a really good exercise to work on if he were still sprinting. Out. In. All right, switch legs. Out. In. Out. In. One more. Out. Really reach, hold it. In, good. So once again, one to two sets of eight to 10 reps on each leg. As you can see, you know, this, is, this would be a great one for Rabbit as far as stabilization, for balance, and also strengthening of the glutes. Now, once again, we're doing some proprioceptive work. This is called standing obliques. They're gonna get some really good rotational work done. They're gonna work their obliques internally and externally. And so they're also going to be extending with the glutes and opening up also getting a little bit of mobility in the thoracic spine. So let's balance on your right leg, leg, leg coming up. All right. All right. In. 
Hold. Try to touch your elbow to your knee. Out. Open up. Reach back with your leg. Back with your elbow. Forwards. Back. Forwards. Hold it. Back. All right, switch. Scrubs. I'm just kidding. Edit that out. All right, in. Out. Open up. Extend. Make sure you're engaging in the glutes. In. Out. Open up. Open up big. In. Done. Good. So, once again, one to two sets of anywhere from eight to ten reps per side. <laughs> so this, this next exercise is really good for getting some movement in the thoracic spine. And uh, also, you're going to get some hip work too, just because it's on done on all fours. All right. Right hand behind the head. All right. Touch your elbow. Open up. Touch your elbow. Open up. Elbow. Open up. Great. Other side. Touch. Open. Touch. Open. One more. Touch. Open. All right, now look, not only is this for, you know, football players or um, basketball players, this is, if you're a golfer, if you're a thrower, if you play baseball, you know, anything rotational, I would definitely add this in to your, you know, mix of exercises. So now we're doing, we're still gonna get some movement in the uh, thoracic spine, but now we're also working in just simply better movement in the shoulders. Now we're gonna use some internal rotation along with, you know, the movement at the T-spine, all right? Let's go. Now, touch, go in, open up, touch, open up. Make sure you, you bring the hand as high on the back as possible, too. All right, in, open up. Good, switch, nice. All right. In, open up. Great way to um, to touch on some asymmetries as well. As you can see, easy being a little bit asymmetrical. Touch, open. One more, boys. Touch, open. Great job. All right. Exercise is just a simple. Um, Exercise to help open up the hip flexor, you know, the psoas, you know, as most people know it. By, but um, the key is if you can open up the hips, you can jump higher and run faster simply because there's no, not as much restriction in the hip area. So when people are trying to like run and extend, there's no restriction. When you're trying to jump up, there's no restrictions. Not to mention, it's really good to, for the hip, for the health of your back to have good mobile hips. All right, all right, reach, reach up, that's good. Squeeze your glutes and push forward without leaning back. Keep everything in alignment. So one of the keys is you don't want to lean back. You want to stay straight. Now turn. Reach up and turn. You can hold the stretch anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds. And then what you'll do is you'll relax. Take a little bit step um, further with the foot. Now let's go again. Still reaching up, straight up, squeezing the glutes. Good. All right, switch sides. I don't do a lot of static stretching, but this is one of the movements where, you know, with the psoas, just because I want them to be, you know, have healthy backs, and I want them to move better, you know, especially in the hip flexor 
area. This is one of the static stretches I do do. All right, do, do. My wife always gets on me about saying do. This is one of the exercises I do. Do. do, do. All right, ready? Reach up. All right. You're gonna be reaching up with this on the same side as the knee that's on the ground. All right, squeezing the glutes. Now it's turned towards me too. And still reaching up, reaching up high. All right, step forwards. All right, now. All right, good. And one way to actually make this a little bit, you know, more challenging is to elevate the back foot of the knee that's on the ground. All right, this next exercise. Now we're getting into the dynamic speed drills and it's called the four position march. Shout out William Bradley. This is something that he's uh, worked with our athletes on and it's created some amazing results. Kate Carney, who got uh, top three of the Nike football combine, used this very movement to really increase his 40 yard dash. So just because it's a dynamic drill doesn't mean it's not directly related to the increase in speed. Four position march. What we're working on is squeezing at the knee, using the hamstring to recover versus using the hip flexor and the quads. Ready? Squeezing straight up. Yeah. Just squeeze straight up, making the four. Yeah. Squeeze. Yeah, that's good. Not so much up, it's just squeeze. All right, now just squeeze me here. You're bringing it forward. You want to make a four, remember? Yeah, there we go. It's just a squeeze, squeeze at the knee. Yeah, if you feel a pull in the hip, it's no good. Yeah, exactly. That's all you want. Squeeze the hamstring. That's it, Rab. Just squeeze the hamstring. Yep. It's a much more healthy way to recover the leg as well. You can practice this drill, you know, more slowly like we are, and the better you get at it, the quicker you can do it. Um, I know that, that William makes this a huge part of his uh, speed development program. Movement is something that probably a lot of you are familiar with. It's called A-skips, and all we're doing is uh, simply looking at creating force against the ground, using the ball of your foot, you know, making sure there's dorsiflexion when the knee is elevated, and so um, we'll get started. Ready? Go. Yeah. Good. All I'm looking for is, number one, you're looking for a little bit of coordination. Number two, I'm looking for the ball of the foot to be hitting. You definitely don't want any kind of heel, you know, being pushed into the ground. As a lot of you already know, it's a braking effect, meaning it's gonna slow you down. So, now we're gonna do, next movement is we're gonna do skips for height. So this time they're gonna create a little bit more force against the ground to elevate them up. All right, boys, skips for height. Ready? Go. Get the knee. Get the toe up, toe up, yeah. All right. Now, once again, same thing, but now they're gonna do skips for distance. They're gonna start pro propelling themselves more uh, horizontally versus vertically. Ready? Go. Distance. Good. They're gonna do a, a skip for five yards into a sprint. Now they're learning to transition these drills into real life sprinting. Ready? Go. Good. What you're gonna do is just is B skips, and now you're just doing the drive phase. You know, once you're at full speed, you're learning to claw the ground and pull with those hamstrings. Ready? Go. All right, good. Now, once again, with the B skips, you want to make sure that they're clawing with the ball of their foot. You never want the heel to be the, you know, the contact on the ground. All right, now we're gonna do B skips to sprint. Yeah, five. Now we're gonna do the same movement, the B skips, and then we're gonna get that, immediately take that into a sprint. Ready? Nope. Good. All right. So the next movement is they're gonna do a forward roll 
into a 10 yard sprint. Uh, I really like to do these. I mean, uh, my boy Ethan Reeves, and one of the Smith coaches at Wake Forest, loves to use some tumbling into his warm ups. But it's a great way to, to go from disorientation to sprinting, which happens a lot in soccer, basketball, football. So this is more of a, and I don't like the word sport specific, but it will translate onto the field much, much better than a lot of exercises that you see out there. All right, ready? Just roll forward. Or? Forward roll, get up and sprint. Forward roll. Just... Forward. All right. You gonna be all right? Yeah. Let me get Rock to show you how to do it. Oh, come on. Rock can do it real well. I know, I've seen it. Ready? Go. <laughs> now we're gonna do a backwards roll into a back pedal. Once again, disorientation into orientation, so. Ready? Yep. Good. All right. So the next movement we're going to do is they're going to be from a full, fully kneeling position. They're going to explode up into immediately into a sprint. This is a great contrast. You know, they're going to be a, basically a plyometric movement into a sprint. So um, should get some decent post activation potentiation with this slash mass method. Ready? Go. <laughs> That was perfect. All right, that's good. Today we're going to go over some of our warm ups that we do on a pretty regular basis here with our athletic performance group. First one we're going to do is the neck series. So, the neck series, I'm pretty sure Travis got that from Coach Ken over with the Panthers. It's three or four different movements. So, so the first one you're going to do, you're going to have your palm, palm out, you're going to go into external rotation, you're going to put your hand on the opposite side of your head and gently pull the neck over. Make sure you're pushing the shoulder back and opening up. You can hold that for about 30 seconds. And you can kind of move it around. Big thing, big thing with that is to be gentle. You don't want to go pull it on your neck and hurt yourself. All right, second one, we're going to go into internal rotation. So you're going to reach behind the back Pull in, you're pulling that belly way. Yep, down and to the side. Real gentle. So. Here, try to reach up and in. There you go. Jump. Good. All right, y'all come out to this five yard line so you can lay down. So we're gonna do the Cobra pose. It's good for opening up. I like it for my abs. My abs are really sore. It helps with the hips and stuff too though. So you're gonna lay down. If I lay on this microphone, is it gonna do anything? No, okay. Lay down flat, hands next to your pecs and then push yourself up and then walk it back a little bit. There you go. You're going to look to both sides. Good. Do five, five each side. Big stretch. So, a couple of important things with this one. You don't want the, you don't want your feet splayed way out. You want to in line with your hips. All right. You guys remember the frog pose? Frog pose. Okay. Oh. You're going to be on all fours. You're going to come out on your knees. You should feel a big stretch in your hips. You're going to have your feet pointed out or as far as you can get them. And you're going to push back and forth. So push your hips back, yeah. Get down on those elbows and push the hips back and then push them forward. Good. All right, do five or six. Holding it a little at the top, pushing the back, pushing it through in the back. And then we're going to roll over and do lion leg circles. Good. 
All right, so if you guys want to kind of, if you want to scoot back and then you guys can stay where you are, give you a little bit of room. Nobody wants to get kicked in the head, right? Good. All right. All right. Try and keep this toe pointed back at you. There you go. Good, 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 good. You need 10 each side, guys. The next one we're gonna do is a scorpion. So you're gonna be, oh, on your stomach again. You're gonna take opposite leg to opposite arm. Just coming across. There we go. Try and reach up with it. All right, do you guys remember mountain climbers? All right, so we're going to do those. We're going to do three sets of 30 seconds, okay? All right, so you get in the push-up position. All right, try and keep those hips neutral. Stay, stay tight in the back. All right, you ready? Go. Good. First one we're going to do is cradles. Make sure you're reaching down to get that foot and not bringing the foot way up. And pull back. Grab at the ankle and the foot. Pull it up to you. Good. The biggest mistake I see with that one is that people will just pick their leg up and then they can just grab it instead of reaching down to find that ankle and keeping it really nice and passive. All right, we're gonna do regular Frankenstein's back. Ready, go. Same arm, same leg. Yeah, right to right, left to left. Good. So the next one we're gonna do is one-legged triple jumps. You're going to try and stick each landing. So, do one of you guys want to demonstrate to everybody else? I'm not really supposed to be jumping right now because my back is still funky. You got it? Pause. Good. Yep, one more. Could you go? Good. He saw in the first one that Tate did, he kind of touched and he picked it back up. That's 100% a-okay. It's better than falling down. All right, last one for today. So we're gonna do four paused Russian hops. On the fourth one, we're gonna run through the end. So Russian hop, I feel like some people call it a jumping lunge maybe. I feel like I've seen that on workout videos from days gone by. So. Pause right here. Go. So, big things with that one. When you're moving your arms, it should be opposite arm, opposite leg. So it shouldn't look like this, right, left arm up, left leg up. It should be right arm up, left leg up. And then when you're in that last one, you're ready to go. You're already in your start position. Go. So this is one of our, our favorite contrast speed workouts. We're gonna do a really heavy prowler. No, just 10 yards. Just turn it around. And somebody else get down there and push it back. Make sure it's behind the 10 yard line or behind the yard line. So you're gonna do a really heavy prowler push for 10 yards, and you're gonna rest 90 seconds, and you're gonna sprint 20 meters. So, 20 meters is what we have to work with here. 
if you have more track or less track, you can change it based on what you have to work with. So you can see the angle that he's at, set your back a little tighter, good. The angle he's at when he's pushing the prowler is about the same angle you're going to be at if you were accelerating in the sprint. It's important. You don't want to be real bent over like this pushing the sled. You're going to be straight pushing. It's easier when you're leaning on a sled that has several hundred pounds on it. But Ready? Go. See how he's nice and low. There you go. Good. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. See, look, we're gonna do a bonus pro tip. It's a pro tip. You run the prowler pole through all the plates and then you can just roll them back in the building or wherever your weight rack is that way. Instead of taking them two or three at a time or trying to hold them together and push a bunch. So I did not come up with that. I think Morgan our uh, youth phenom weightlifter came up with it. See, look. I don't think he took enough plates with him. <laughs> all right, all the videos that you just watched are part of the program that we just released today in our book, Program Sampler 2. For all of you that don't know, the Program Sampler 2 is the way that we support our team. Uh, it's our nonprofit team. So go to mashlead.com get the program sampler too, and uh, you'll get a full list of strength conditioning workouts and speed workouts, along with a lot of other workouts.